right back to the Kevin Durant saga, right off the vacation, right back to KD. We know for about a month now, as a matter of fact, five days from now, I believe will be the one month uh, mark since KD officially asked out of Brooklyn. And we got a new update from Adrian Wojnarowski. It was late, late last night. Check my phone this morning. I saw Woj had broken something at 2, 2.30 in the morning Easter. I'm like, whoa, is it, you know, something big happened? And according to Woj, uh, he said in an article, as Brooklyn Nets star Kevin Durant's trade request approaches for a fourth week, the Boston Celtics have emerged among teams engaged in talks on a possible deal. The Celtics appear no closer to acquiring Durant than others in discussions with the Nets, but Boston's ability to include all-star forward Jalen Brown as a centerpiece in offers does help make the team formidable in its pursuit. So, and, and this is, it's funny, I kind of feel somewhat vindicated because I said the day after Katie asked out and I dismissed the Celtics as a possible trade option in terms of fit and whatnot, then I kind of, I slept on it. You can look, go back and look. I kind of slept on it. I was like, you know what? This might actually work. Boston has the package, and I'll go and put it up for you right now once again. I put it up in the past, but Boston gets Kevin Durant, and the, and the Brooklyn Nets get Jalen Brown, Marcus Smart, Al Horford, and two first-round picks. Now, reportedly, according to Woj and to Sham Sharania, the two best insiders in the game, uh, Boss, I'm sorry, Brooklyn wants Jalen Brown, obviously. You're going to have to recruit, include Brown or Tatum, and Boston's not going to give up Jason Tatum. He, you know, For as, as, as subpar as he played in the finals, the man was just first-team All-NBA. You'll have to include Jalen Brown. Apparently, um, Derek White was included in, with, in the deal with three first-round picks. Brooklyn also wants Boston to give up Marcus Smart and an additional first-round picks. And possibly could swap between them and the Nets. So essentially, an all-star Jalen Brown, the defensive player of the year, Marcus Smart, a really good bench player in Derek White, had a subpar finals, but... In my opinion, Boston would not have gotten to the finals if not for the efforts of Derek White, especially in the Eastern Conference Finals and fourth first-round picks. Now, if Brooklyn is going to trade Kevin Durant, this trade makes perfect sense because now you add Jalen Brown to a team that's already got eye roll, <laughs> Ben Simmons, and you, you've got obviously a, a good group of guys. You've got two shooters in Seth Curry and in Joe Harris. You just added Royce O'Neal. It's a nice basketball team. Yeah, Marcus Smart now, defensive player of the year. Derek White coming off the bench. Uh, I still have major questions about Steve Nash as a head coach. And by the way, looks like Kyrie Irving isn't going anywhere. A report came out today that regardless of KD stays or if KD leaves, leaves Kyrie's probably going to be a net next season. So that's, you know, that's a playoff team in the Eastern Conference. I, I think that, that it's safe to say that is a playoff team, probably a play-in team, but they'll probably get in the playoffs, uh, you know, depending on how many games that, uh, you know, the two, three best players miss. Now, also the dynamic between Jalen Brown and Kyrie Irving, concerning how that how, how that went in Boston, we'll see. For Boston, though, would I make the deal? Would I trade Jalen Brown, Marcus Smart, Derek White, and the first-round picks? Well, first of all, in terms of the picks, you know, as, as, as you know, Les Snead has said, well, he hasn't said this with the Rams, but it's kind of become the, the saying around Les Snead, F them picks. Boston doesn't really need picks. They are in championship mode right now. Obviously, Jason Tatum is still young. He's what, 24, 25 years of age? He's not even his prime yet. And he had, up until the finals, he had a really, really good postseason run. He's just going to keep getting better. Okay, Ime Udoka, what a job he did in his first year as a head coach. You add Malcolm Brogdon. You add Danilo Gallinari. Okay, you've already got Al Horford there for veteran leadership, and he had a good postseason run, a good regular season as well. Robert Williams is a top three shot blocker in basketball, was great playing 75% on a, on a hurt you know leg reportedly was having to get his knee drained. He was so beat up. You had a Grant Williams, my guy from Tennessee, coming off the bench. I thought he played well last season, improved his three-point shooting tremendously. That's still a championship team if you're the Boston Celtics, if you make this trade. So first of all, in terms of the picks, that doesn't really matter right now. By the way, buyout market is always available. I mean, think about how many teams have taken advantage of the buyout market and, and, and gotten guys that have helped them win. Boston could take advantage of that because, look, that's an attractive destination now at this point next season if they continue off the momentum of this past season getting to the NBA Finals. You could add a player in the buyout market, a good veteran player who can help you possibly get back to, to the NBA Finals once again. But you're talking about a starting lineup, okay, of, of, of Malcolm Brogdon, Jason Tatum, Kevin Durant, Al Horford, Robert Williams. Size, defense, scoring, shooting. Isn't that what wins in the NBA? 
<laughs> these days. All right, Malcolm Brogdon, excellent shooter. Jason Tatum, good three-point shooter. Kevin Durant, excellent three-point shooter. Same could be said about Al Horford, not to the level of KD, but Al Horford, we know, can knock down the three. Robert Williams can't, but he's a good, he's great in the pick and roll. And again, we know the, the impact he brings on the defensive end of the floor. Remember, KD was top five in the league in blocks his second year in Golden State. And you have depth come off the bench. You have guys like Gallinari, like Grant Williams, like Peyton Pritchard. To me, this makes sense for both sides. Now, again, I want to reiterate what Woj said. The Celtics appear no closer to acquiring Durant than others in discussions with the Nets. Okay, so basically Boston's on equal footing with everybody else. Now, Woj would go on to say in this article, uh, the Miami Heat, the Phoenix Suns, and the Toronto Raptors have been well-known to varying de have varying degrees of interest in Kevin Durant. Here's the thing. Phoenix is out, okay? Now that they made this deal with DeAndre Ayton because of sort of this, this weird clause or this weird rule in the CBA, they cannot trade DeAndre Ayton until next year because he was a restricted free agent and he was just signed, okay? So that's off the table. I, Phoenix... I don't, I, I, don't I, can't, I genuinely cannot see a path for the Phoenix Suns acquiring Kevin Durant. I can't. Unless they just gut their entire team, which they're not going to do. Miami, I don't know. You probably have to you know, get in, involved in a three-team trade, but isn't the point of getting Jimmy Butler, Katie, and Bam Adebayo teamed up? So outside of that, what do you got? Tyler Hero, Victor Oladipo, uh, you know, do you trade Duncan Robinson, Gabe Vincent? I mean, it's, it's kind of... It's a good bench, but it's not enough to get Kevin Durant. So, in terms of how this works for both sides, I think it does. It, it gives Brooklyn assets, which they are devoid of right now, and gives them draft picks, gives them the uh, opportunity to build in the future. Kyrie Irving is probably going to leave next summer and go to Los Angeles. That's, in all likelihood, I think that will be the case. Okay, Jalen Brown, does he stay? Does he go? I, I think his contract, he's still got another two, three years in his deal, so he'll be in Brooklyn. So Brooklyn will be at least viable. I think the biggest problem now with the Nets at this point, if they make the straight, is now you got to get a new head coach because Steve Nash, love him, was you know a great player, Hall of Famer, two-time MVP. But I'm not sure if he even runs any set plays for KD and Kyrie. Is that because Steve Nash doesn't know how? Doubt it. Maybe that has something to do with his two superstar players, but that's just how it is. Should have never let go of Kenny Atkinson, but that's neither here nor there. But I'll reiterate, I said a month ago, I think this works. This makes sense for both sides. Brooklyn stays viable. Boston gets better. Did they give up depth? Yeah. But <laughs> you're adding Kevin Durant. And here's the thing, too. Again, KD does not have to be the emotional leader of the Boston Celtics. This is why I said... It's no coincidence that it was the Miami Heat and the Phoenix Suns that were on, or at least I should say at the top of his wish list. It's no success that he had his greatest success in Golden State. No secret. Got the two leaders, Steph Curry, Draymond Green. They're the heartbeat of the Warriors. A set, a set Hall of Fame level head coach, Steve Kerr. Same thing in Miami. Hall of Fame head coach, in my view, Eric Spolstra. And who's the heartbeat of the Miami Heat? Jimmy Butler, and to a larger degree, Udonis Haslam. Phoenix, who's the heartbeat of that team? Chris Paul. Great coach, Monty Williams. Congrats to Monty. He just got extended. So KD doesn't have to be, as Charles Barkley called it, the bus driver. Doesn't have to be. Can he be the best player? Absolutely. You know, KD goes to boss. KD goes to every team not named the Bucks, Lakers, Mavs, I mean, and Warriors. Outside of like those, he's he's the best player on the team, on any team in the NBA, outside the, the, the four I mentioned. That's how great of a basketball player this guy is. He's one of the 20 greatest players of all time. But is he a bus driver? Is he the guy that is going to be the driving force, the heart and soul? Never forget, Kawhi Leonard was the best player in a championship team in Toronto. The heartbeat of the Raptors was Kyle Lowry. Okay, Kawhi didn't lead them. He's the best player. He did not lead them to the title. He's the missing piece, no question. But it's it, it's it's a different ball game when we, when we talk about guys who I'm not even saying like guys who can just drag teams like LeBron did that for you know years in Cleveland. But just guys who the whole team, the whole franchise looks to you. Hey, you know X. Hey Steph. Hey Giannis. Hey LeBron. Take us there. Well, 
All three of them have shown that they can do that. KD? Mm, not really. My view, he was the best player on that first Warriors title, at least the first title with Kevin Durant in 2017. KD was the best player on the team. My opinion, Steph had, had you know, re-solidified himself as the best player in 2018. But I've seen KD can be the best player on a title team. Kawhi Leonard could be the best player on a title team. Leading them there, whole different story. But I think this works for both sides. I really do. Uh, he gets to go to a team that's gotten, you know, it's, it's crazy to say established. Ime Odoka was only there for a year, but he's widely respected around the NBA. We know the impact he had, you know, on the defensive end for the Celtics. The thing with Boston now is late game execution. Well, KD's one of the better closers we have in the NBA. KD is, is probably the best player in the NBA when it comes to 10 seconds left, give him the ball, let him go win the game. Like, he, he's he's probably the – he, Damian Lillard, like, those are like the top two. Steph, that that's that's what they do. They, they are they are clutch time scorers. So, I think it works for both sides. I really do. Thanks so much for watching the show on YouTube. Be sure to click that big red subscribe button and go check out the other clips and full shows of Carving It Up Live. Have a blessed day.